Right, so Big Ed is back on our screens and he hasn't changed one bit. This peculiar little man is still just as socially, romantically and vertically challenged as he was the day we said goodbye to him at the end of season 4 of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days. This time he's made his grand return on another spin-off series called 90 Day The Single Life. It's a new series following six 90 Day Fiancé favourites as they return to the dating scene after their international relationships crashed and burned. We basically get to watch as they navigate everything from rejection and heartbreak to first dates and falling in love again. And today we're going to be having a look at the first few episodes featuring Big Ed himself. I am Big Ed, and I live in San Diego, California. It's been eight months since his split with Rose, and although his newfound infamy has brought him plenty of money, there's one thing he can't buy with it, and that's love. After being put in the friend zone by the one person he's caught feelings for since Rose, he's decided that now is the time to put himself back on the market. I am single, and I am currently updating my dating profile. I want people to laugh and Costumes are a great way to kind of break the ice. Yes, good. I need to lose a few pounds. I'm not going to argue with anyone there, but personality and confidence is what people are attracted to. Shame you're a massive asshole, then, isn't it? Also, who's going to be swiping on Tinder, come across a 55 year old in a Nacho Libre outfit, and be like, yeah, this guy's definitely looking for a serious relationship? You're not going to find love on a dating app being dressed as a wrestler. You're just going to find girls who want to get choked out. Oh my god, this man is a genius. You want me to take my shirt off? Boom. <laughs> right now, I'm on four dating apps, but I want to give myself my best odds, so I might be adding a couple more. One of the good things about dating apps is that you get to set your own search criteria. You know, what genders you're interested in, how far away do you want them to be, what kind of age range you're looking for, and so on. Although they were far from the main reasons that Ed and Rose broke up, quite a few of the issues they had stemmed from the fact that they lived 7,000 miles apart and that Rose was half of Ed's age. In fact, she was even several years younger than his daughter. With all of the issues that caused and Ed now being 55 years old, he's come to realise that he can't really be making that same mistake again. Sort of. My last ex-girlfriend, Rose, was 23, but you know, I won't ever date anybody that young. Again. Teddy, what did we decide in my age range? 29 to 48. <laughs> okay, good. I'll take that as a yes. I typically connect with younger women because, I mean, I don't consider myself old. 55 isn't that old. Does he not think that there are women out there his age that are just as young at heart as he is? I reckon he could be missing out here. I've had that thing on 65 plus since the day I turned 18. Like, Dame Judi Dench is four times my age, but if she pops up whilst I'm swiping, I'm spending my entire student loan on super likes. You know, I think he's got a thing for younger women because they tend to be less experienced, which means that they're less likely to recognise all of his glaring red flags. Either way, for someone who's only been in one serious relationship in 30 years, you'd think he'd be a little bit less picky. The perfect kind of woman that I'm looking for, I think number one would have to be kind. Fair. Um, number two, she has to be hot, and that's H-A-U-T-E, which means she's cute with a sense of fashion. Kind of cringe, but also fair. She has to love to make love, of course. Gross. Also kind of asking for three in one there. Strong stomach, weak sense of smell, preferably blind, but go on. Um, physical, she needs to be my body type, which is, you know, short. <laughs> and a refreshing amount of humility to top it off. I know sometimes he needs to be knocked down a peg or two, but they did him dirty with that camera angle. He sat there looking like a big juicy lemon. Ed's first interaction with a woman comes quite early on into the first episode, and it starts off pretty much exactly how you'd expect. Well, hello. Hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, I'm Ed. Uh, hey, Ed. I elbow punch or whatever. <laughs> not a punch, an elbow shake. Yeah, I'm not you. Today, I'm meeting Sapphire. She's actually from Israel. She's very beautiful. Hey, I like the view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank have, you. Have you ever heard that? I'm just kidding. Thank you. Anyway, so, great. He's actually such a little narcissist, isn't he? 
I like the view, like, oh yeah, that's just one of my catchphrases, by the way, like, I don't know if you've heard of this little show called 90 Day Fiancé, I'm kind of a big deal on it. Like, you got famous for treating Rose like trash and having a distinct lack of neck. Simmer down a little bit. This is like perfect weather, like... Yeah, <laughs> I would prefer it a little bit colder, but yeah. that's okay. You should have wore a shortened t-shirt, I'm kidding. <laughs> From a slightly awkward conversation about the weather to you should have worn more revealing clothes in literally 10 seconds, it really is a mystery why he's still single. Despite how they make it look, Sapphire is actually Ed's brand new relationship coach. Rose is pretty much the only person that Ed has dated in almost 30 years, basically since he cheated on his wife and she divorced him. He's tried to get back on the dating scene since he had his heart broken by Rose, but it just hasn't worked out for him. He's tried with a few girls and even caught feelings for one of his friends, but apparently he keeps getting put in the friend zone no matter how persistent he is. I think it's dented his confidence a little bit, so he's hired Sapphire to help him figure out what's been going wrong. Love is not I'm looking to give you so you will give me, but love is also I appreciate myself. So by appreciating myself, I know I'm capable of giving love and I also deserve that. Yeah, but I, I don't really know. I don't think I deserve that's my sorry. I just got emotional. I don't that's okay. think I deserve it. It's kind of sad that he feels like he doesn't deserve love, but there are so many issues when it comes to Ed and how he treats people in a relationship. And it kind of feels like this allowed him to shift the blame away from himself a little bit. This was the first time that Ed and Sapphire had met, so she didn't really know enough about him to be able to help him in one session, but it was all Ed needed to muster up the courage to shoot his next shot. This time, he's convinced himself that he's fallen in love with the manager of his favourite restaurant. So tonight, he's paying her a visit with his friend Lily there for moral support to tell her how he feels. Lily is my wing woman tonight. She knows I want to ask Liz out and that I've wanted to for two months. She doesn't know how I feel about her. I don't know how she feels about me. As you know, I'm horrible at women, right? I know. As you know. I know. So... Will you ask her for me? Ed! Please. Okay, I know. Ed. I know, I gotta be a man, okay? Yeah. Okay. I can't believe he's a 55 year old man asking his friend to ask a girl out for him. Literally on the same day that he was talking about confidence being the thing that girls are attracted to. Also, Liz is 28. He's literally just set an age boundary at an absolute minimum of 29 and he's already going a year under it. This man will never learn, I swear. Anyway, as Liz was coming back to the table, Lily went for a tactical toilet break, allowing Ed to seize the moment. Hey, so I think you're amazing. And uh, I want to ask you out on a date so we can get to know each other. So we can get to know each other. Um. Oh, she looks awkward there. He's put her in a bit of an awkward situation, hasn't he? Like, imagine how awkward it would be if Liz said no and then just had to keep serving them all night. I think he should have just asked her when she was getting off or when her next break was, and she would have felt like she was under so much less pressure. Brunch? Hi. Brunch, I love it. Brunch, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I'm glad that I'm wearing a mask to cover up my facial expression because I do feel like facial expressions can tell a lot. I guess I just never really pictured him actually asking me out on a date. Hard to tell if she's pleasantly surprised or cringing in disgust, but I think it's a mixture of the two. Either way, she said yes, so Big Ed has got himself a date. We're going to brunch tomorrow. You're gonna behave? Yes. Uh, well, sort of. No, yes, I will. Ed! I will! I'm not gonna try to impress her. I'm just gonna be with her. Be yourself, all times. He's not gonna try and impress her and he's gonna be himself. That is the worst possible combination for Big Ed on a first date. To be fair, it's been eight months and a lot can change in that time. Ed has been plastering himself all over social media since then, and there is no doubt in my mind that he'll be well aware of all of the criticism of him. So I'm kind of hoping that he's taken a lot of it on board and is going to use this series to kind of show people that he's at least making an effort to change. There are some positive things that I did learn from Rose. Like, I just have to be honest and upfront. I think I'm ready for a relationship. And 
I will go slow. I just don't want to get hurt again. I don't really want to go through all the times that Ed treated Rose badly in that 90 Day Fiancé series. Like, I have a playlist for those of you who want to relive the best bits from the series. But him lying to Rose and not telling her that he didn't want kids when he knew it was her dream was probably one of the worst things he did. And it was actually the cause of the argument that ended their relationship. So it's nice to hear that he wants to be honest and upfront this time. I came here with a lot of confidence, but I don't want to screw it up. I haven't felt this way in years. And there's that risk I'll end up in this friend zone. It's like scary. His dangling feet being unable to touch the floor and absolutely terrified face make him look like a kid in a booster seat in the back of his mum's car on his way to his first day at school. This cameraman's out for blood, I swear. Um, I'm feeling a little bit of excitement and a little bit of nervousness because we've never actually had a one-on-one -on -one experience together. I want to know more about Ed. So I'm very happy that I stepped out of like my comfort zone to come on this date. I think she's actually quite cute, you know. I rate that she's giving Ed a chance. Kind of sounds like she's reading off a script that Ed paid her to recite, but I'm sure she's fine. I mean, he definitely didn't script the date. So how's it going? Good. <laughs> Good. Starving. Starving, Starving. I, know. I was getting hangry. <laughs> so... <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's so awkward. I want to roast him for this, but I just can't. I've been in that position myself so many times. You rock up thinking you're going to have absolutely loads to say and loads to talk about. And the time comes and you get so nervous, your mind just goes completely blank. Despite the awkward start, Ed's glass of wine and Liz's cocktail came and the pair loosened up a bit. There was a bit of small talk and a few jokes, and then they moved on to the more serious conversations. It's hard to talk about. I actually have been married twice, divorced. I'm 28. Um, I don't want to be hurt again. I have like huge trust issues and I don't ever talk about my second marriage. She was really close to tears there. It's clear something bad happened. Like maybe her partner broke her heart or was unfaithful to her, or maybe something worse happened. But like she said, she doesn't really talk about it. If you remember, one big issue Ed had with Rose was that he had a huge problem with her past, especially parts that she wouldn't speak about. So I think this could be an issue for them further down the line. I'm happy that she's being that upfront with me, but I am curious to know what that baggage is. I'm like damaged. Where, how are you damaged? Can I tell you what that is to me? I call that experience. Never use that word, ever. I never want you to call yourself damaged. Yeah. Fair play, Ed. Respect. You know, after how he reacted to Rose having a past, I always thought that part of his attraction to younger women was kind of to do with this weird notion of younger women being less experienced and therefore being less used. So this was quite reassuring to hear. I mean, it's bare minimum stuff, but still, credit where credit's due. Anyway, this has all been about me. You. <laughs> I don't know much about your life. <laughs> I, I got married young. I went through a really hard divorce. And um, I just have really focused on myself. I've just enjoyed being, you know, a bachelor. Big Ed the Bachelor. I'm not sure what that entails exactly. Like, he's gotten so lonely lately that he's asked his mum to move in with him. But then again, he's constantly sharing articles of him being spotted out and about with younger women, as if it's some creepy flex. So who knows what he's been up to? I kind of care for him a little bit more than what I thought I did. He's very confident, very charismatic. He's very straightforward but my last relationship was a couple months ago. So I'm not sure where I stand. There is definitely a weird kind of charisma and charm about Big Ed that I just can't seem to put my finger on. I feel like whether you love him or hate him, he's definitely got something about him which engages people and makes them want to watch him. So part of me isn't surprised that she's caught feelings. How long that will last once she gets to know him though, I'm not so sure. Liz is so amazing. Oh my God. 
am so comfortable talking to her, and she's extremely beautiful. I haven't felt this way since Rose. I mean, I think I've made, I've made it pretty clear how I feel. I can tell it's gonna take some time for her to really open up, but I hope that there's gonna be a second date. I think there might be, you know. This wasn't a bad first date at all. They seemed to get on pretty well, they had a nice range of light-hearted to deep conversations, and most surprisingly, Ed was actually pretty respectful. So, will Ed settle down and this be the love of his life, or will it all spiral out of control, leaving him heartbroken and alone once again? I guess we're just gonna have to find out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, because there is an entire season to come filled with drama and entertainment, and I would love to cover it. If you did, feel free to let me know by dropping a like on this video. And yeah, make sure you subscribe down below if you're not already so you don't miss the next one. Well, that is unfortunately all we have time for today. So as always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter and other social media will be down below. So feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to make, or just say hi in between uploads. I'd also just like to give a very quick shout out to my Patreon supporters for supporting me and the channel over on Patreon. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.